Happy Saturday, everybody. It is up and coming day, which is where we do all the up and coming bands that are not well known around the world and to the main industry, but are making huge impacts. And those of us who love finding these hidden gems were really everywhere. Today, we're going to Chicago. Why? Well, because it's the Windy City, but mainly because, well, that's where Secret Pro resides. My name is Old School Nerd, and this is my reaction to their new one, Shadow Machine. <laughs> Check us out on OldSchoolNerd.com. It's got all the social media posts. The Patreon link for those who want to support the channel. We appreciate all of you. Check us out on Twitch.tv slash OldSchoolNerd. We're back. And we have uh, streams almost every day doing reactions to things that you want me to see. Some of you need help. Okay, speaking of help, um, the wall is getting full, by the way, which just means I need a bigger wall. <laughs> anyway, if you see a band you recognize on here, just... Point them out and say, ooh, it's fine. All right, everybody, Seeker Pearl. They're a three-piece progressive rock band from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, Lindsay, Bam Bam, and Pornstash. Yeah, that's their names. Why doesn't Lindsay have a, a nickname? Because she scares me, and I'm just going to call her by Miss Lindsay from now on. All right, three-piece from Chicago, doing that progressive rock vibe, very experimental, very creative. It's what we love about it, so here we go. I'm going to uh, do through the through the power of the Internet and OBS and, you know, Stream Deck. I'm going to do this. And there we go. <laughs> I know it's cool. All right, everybody. This is Secret Pearl. Yeah, it definitely is Chicago. Here we go. This one's called Shatter Machine. That's some low end resonance, nice. That rhythm section is ridiculous. Here's my favorite part. The rhythm section is Bam Bam, the drummer, and Lindsay. You don't get to see her very often on the videos because you'll see Bam Bam playing drums. You'll see Captain Pornstash playing uh, his guitar, and you see the guys showing off their musical chops, but you rarely get to see Lindsay doing it because she's always doing lead singer slash uh, focal point of the story of the video so you don't get to see her play the bass that often but that wicked bass lick vibe you're hearing that rhythm section that's her and Bam Bam so I, I okay things that Secret Pro reminds me of Rush okay they're they get snow where they're from but they're not Canadian so okay they're a three piece yes the lead singer plays bass yes um, they both do progressive music Yes. Now, you know, the similarities also go where Rush grounded out for years in their career before they had that one little spark. They just, <laughs> yeah, Secret Pearl's doing the same thing. This entire series of music that they're releasing is created by themselves. In fact, this video, the three of them did it themselves. No production company, no... Um, no outside huge help, you know, no sponsors. They like literally threw this together themselves. They created something that is uniquely themselves, which 
you got to appreciate. You have to appreciate this. And it's a wicked bass lick too. So let's keep going. What kind of destiny shit is this? Very progressive, the storytelling in this part. Nice. There can only be one Lindsay. So you guys are seeing like the big orb in the sky. It looks like the Traveler from Destiny 2. We see homages to the Matrix moving through the, the, the motorcycle, the hacking, the whole uh, electric uh, dimensional door. very sci-fi. But at the same time, remember, it all comes down to 1984. The Highlander, Queen soundtrack, by the way, awesome. There can only be one Lindsay. Especially not one with glowing blue eyes. That's just not allowed. That, Lindsay frightens me as enough as it is. If she had glowing blue eyes, I'd, I'd be done. Lindsay reminds me of Julian Baker. Not only in, they both look very similar. They both look very similar to each other. But um, just the storytelling and the, the songwriting and lyrically. they It's personal. You can relate to everything. Even a sci-fi story like this, you're like, I feel it. It's organic. That's what it is. It's organic. And organic is important when it comes to music. Wow. That's awesome. Look, they got a little... Oh, wait. Hey, uh, we're getting ready to try. Okay, just as a sneak peek, I'm going to do the Shadow Machine recording in studio. I want <laughs> Behind the scenes, I'm definitely going to do this. Uh, I guess Lindsay, Bam Bam, and Pornstash are going to show us some stuff on how they made this, which is awesome. But before I do that, I know it's a little bit longer reaction than normal, but it's important that I share this stuff with you because this is some of the stuff. People ask me, why do you do what you do? Why, what, what do you really love? I mean, you've done reactions to all these crazy bands. You've seen so many. You've done a th over 1,400 reactions on YouTube. What's your favorite stuff? I love Sabaton, I love Ginger, I love Bloodywood. I love all of them because they're they're like the bucket list bands right here. But I also love the creative artists. 
your Hallocene, your Lauren Bavick, your Varla Orlandi, and just Joe whenever, you know, I get that plate from him. And then over here you have your production band. You have Dragon Force and uh, Seven Spires, Visions of Atlantis, you know, Firewind, all, you know, your, your European and, and American um, label bands that are just grinding it out and creating good music. But some of my favorite stuff are the up and coming bands that you may not hear of outside of YouTube or through growing the following. Secret Pearl is one of those. There's one of my favorite bands of all time on this channel is called Torrential Rain. They're in Germany. They're a completely independent band, similar to Secret Pearl. You have bands like Red Handed Denial up in Toronto, Canada, turning heads, you know, like, oh my God, the album they created this year is probably one of the best albums of the year, right, right alongside with like Bloody Wood and, and some of these, and of course the, 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 you know, you have your Electric Cowboy, Bloody Wood, and you've got, you know, bands like, shoot, man, there's so many bands that put out music this year that makes me go, oh my God, it's some of their best work. Red Handed and I did one of those. Then you go out to the West Coast of the United States, you have bands like Ventersea, who are crossing that barrier into the next level of their career. You have bands like Beautiful Skeletons, who are also similar to Secret Pearl. They're a regional band, but through the magic of YouTube, their, their music gets out and people are seeing it around the world. And that's super important. I know that I've, there's so many other bands that I talk to all the time that I, that I just absolutely love. And they're like, thanks, buddy, because I want for people to see these bands. It's easy to go to a Sabaton concert and see the amazing storytelling they do, but they've been doing it for God, almost 20 years. And, um, they're to a point now where they, they're headlining us tours and playing to 80,000 people at Vakken or Sabaton open air. They have their own open air concert, Bloodywood, who's probably the biggest independent band I know just saw them two days ago. And, and when I tell you that, um, Bloodywood, is their their um their album this year um i don't know how they're gonna outdo it um or create the next level for them because it's such an amazing album and if you get a chance to see bloody wood live in europe coming up uh in the next few months because they're going to do some shows in india and then they're going to go to europe if you miss them you're missing out on something special because their videos are amazing their songs are amazing but live you cannot touch them they are insane all the bands on the wall mean something to me and there's a reason for that Secret Pearl means something to me. Torrential Rain means something to me. Beautiful Skeletons, Hallocene, Lauren Babick, Violet Orlandi, Red Handed Denial. I can go on and on and on. Many of the bands that I love the most are the ones that just like me, just trying to make it in my career. Uh, YouTube, I am not a major player. I'm still a small fish in a medium sized pond. Am I growing? Yes, that's because of all of you and bands like Secret Pearl. So I'm gonna play this out. Let's watch how they did it in the studio together, and then that'll end my video of my reaction to Secret Pearl. Hey, my name is Old School Nerd. Love one another, take care of each other. We're all stuck in this mud ball together. Let's see what uh, Lindsay's porn stash and Bam Bam have to do on this one. Back some drums with Dino. Show you what it looks like. A uh, bunch of mics. So yeah, we're just waiting for Dino to get here. And we'll get all set. Pretty stoked. Um, That's a hell of a board. Holy crap. And look, who's at the board? Lindsay's at the board. They made the whole thing themselves. This is just them. There's Bam Bam. I mean, Dino. So like, I just want the pattern to be Dino, Dino, Bam Bam, you name him. He's the guy. They don't say enough. It's it's not said enough, but seriously, when you when you're setting up to record, mic placement and the pre-production is almost as important as the person playing because if you don't capture it right, it's useless. And they are doing everything to get that inner core sound too, which is awesome. You won't remember. Andrew said you dropped it. <laughs> yeah, 
back. If you could come back on the arm, straight back a little bit. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Dino's like, I just want to play. Look, Dino with his uh, IEMs. <laughs> I don't like headphones anymore because I've kind of grown accustomed to IEMs for so long. It's science. It's science. <laughs> I was just like, why did I agree to this shit today? No, nah, this, this is great. Most people, you know, when they come in, they just want to get the drums over with as fast as possible. They don't even care about getting tones. Sons of bitches. What? Yeah, man. Help me do that yeah. over here. Because <laughs> you're doing it right. Okay. Yep. This is just to lay down the drum track, the bass drum track to start the song so they can start recording. And they've spent hours <laughs> setting up mics to make sure it's what they want that's why this is why i like this band this is why i think they're this is why i think the next thing for them could be anything because when you put this much attention to things that most people don't even care about that's important Who's the producer on this one? Oh, yeah, it's Lindsay. <laughs> That's crazy. You think it's too tight, though? I think it depends on the context. Can you um, take one of the rings off and let's see how it sounds in here? Because it yeah. sounds really tight. No, put them both. Hit hard. Hit hard, yep. Lindsay's trying to get a full sound but without any ringing so she doesn't have muddiness in the mix. Lindsay is a producer, not just a bass player and singer and songwriter. She gets it. I'll just play it back so you can get a feel for how loud the click is and whatnot. Is the click pre-fader set? Yeah. Lindsay's listening to the the fulfillment of the vision in the song. She's listening to um, the crispness. She's making sure he's hitting all of his counts, staying on the track, staying within the confines of what they're doing. Now, of course, in this mix, right now, the drums, all the microphones that are catching the gain of everything within the drum set are what we refer to as P1, which is priority one, which means you're going to hear them above everything else in the mix. When you go to post-production, you take the drum track and you place it where you want it within the priority of the sound mix. So later on, you'll see no, there are times when, and that P1 changes position depending upon the part of the song. There are parts where when you hear of a, a guitar solo in a band and the guitarist hits the override button, it changes the tone, but it also changes it in the mix where someone who's doing post-production goes, okay, we know at this point when he goes override, we're gonna do a division here, move him into priority in the queue, to where we can hear that above everything else, but at the same, because if, if you don't set priority in the mix, if two things are a competing level in the game or priority in the mix, it's referred to as muddy. When you muddy the sound, that's, and you see it a lot in bands when I do a reaction and I'll be talking about two singers, and sometimes the singer's voices are either too similar or they're so far apart that when they sing at the same time, and they both have the same level in the queue, and the post-production didn't put one over the other, I see it muddies it, where they cancel each other out in the flow of the song. Right now, she's not worried about that. She just wants to make sure that Dino, bam, bam, puts everything he needs to do precisely in the, in the set of the song. 
and she knows that in post-production she can put everyone where they need to be now when you see a band like this live does that matter hell no that's a pa that's 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 a public announce guy that's sitting in the venue and depending upon the acoustics of the venue uh the monitor set if they're using all in-ears and they have no floor monitors and sometimes even if a band has all all iems they all have in-ears right and they all can control their monitors if something goes wrong they need floor monitors to where they can still hear what they're doing so they can continue to the pro performance that's a fail safe now here's the problem how loud can that monitor rack be well you have to be very careful if you make the monitor rack so loud that on the reflection if it's not soundproof properly it reflects into the pa area that's a problem it'll muddy the sound and cause an echo that makes the makes the whole thing kind of diffused last night when uh when we saw bloody wood and we saw a killer's confession um i gotta be honest with you the two guys that did the sound mixing in that venue made it extremely loud but extremely clean extremely clean which was nice to have something that was it felt around 100 and about, between 112 and 118 decimals it wasn't like 120 where you're like fuck the world but it was really loud and the the, the venue had good acoustics because it had chambers to absorb sound and didn't have a lot of solid walls to cause a direct echo so they did a great job in the sound. This is the kind of thing that when you sit in a production chair, whether you're a nerd or you're a computer genius and stuff, some of the best mixers of music ha are not technical at all. They just know how to tell a story. And that's why I love what they're doing here. And, and Lindsay, everything I'm saying right now, Lindsay gets, she's like, okay, yeah, I want to tell my story. I want it to sound proper. I don't want it to be muddied. Everything's got to be in its space, but I want to make sure I get a good solid cued sound for this drum so i can layer it into my uh into my mix and post and make it something beautiful and this song shadow machine was the longest one of their series as far as the distance from the last one this one was a couple of months from their last one before they were doing them like every three weeks or every month and it was like okay here comes it and then there was a gap between the last one and this one and i think it's because they did it themselves and when you do it yourself there is a positive and there's a negative if you let it be that way the positive is with lindsay being the producer as the storyboard writer as the songwriter as the lyricist as the bass player and and the and the three members of the band coming together to produce this together they will be able to get exactly what they want not through someone else's interpretation exactly what they want however perfectionism can come into play where you can literally get lost in I, I need it to be better i need it to that case, that takes the discipline to be able to step back and go that's that's good and we're going to do that because otherwise they can spend thousands of dollars in studio time because they can't get past themselves so that's why a lot of bands use producers because they know that if they go into the thing if i don't think metallica has ever done an album where they didn't have a producer like bob rock or something because if you put uh, Lars and James Hetfield in the studio and they were producing the whole album themselves and they made all the decisions constantly and didn't have a producer saying no we'd still be waiting for the Black Album <laughs> I'm serious it's pretty tight yeah, and I thought like the whole ride little ding 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 the first time was something was off on like one of them it seemed like so yeah. it's good. I'm subscribed. You, know, you need to be as well. Recorded, you know, he actually broke the beater off the off the kick pedal. Oh, I've never yeah. seen that in my yeah. life. The yeah. metal bar of the beater oh. snapped. Good job. And that's why we call him Bam Bam cuz he breaks stuff. All right, so this is Secret Pro. Please subscribe to them. They're a band from Chicago, Illinois as it says on their tag. Um, very progressive, very experimental. They love to make storytelling type music, which is really good. And you can feel the emotion of this band. My name is Old School Nerd, like I told you before. Love one another, take care of each other. We're all stuck in this mud ball together. Get out of here. No, go. We got more stuff coming. Talk to you later.